This use of play is brought to you by... Rock the remote with hours of free karaoke on video on demand from Flo. So bring it like Bay. There's even wonderful kids sing-alongs too. Available anytime. Simply press the VOD button on your Flo remote. This is how we do TV. This is how we flow. This is the Barbados Today Evening News Update for Friday, February 12th. Thank you for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Our top story, there will be no introduction of a fat tax in this year's budget. Finance Minister Chris Sinclair says although he accepts that there is an urgent need to reduce the over $700 million health care budget, he is not prepared to go the route of taxing Barbadians for overindulgence. However, Sinclair is not ruling out the introduction of other measures in his upcoming budget. I can't say that, I can't say that at this stage, no. I can't say that. It feels the discourse that's going on. Um, there are many different models that are being proposed. Um, uh, the, the staff, you know, when we think we've had um, as full a discussion as possible, uh, not, not just in health, we have other issues, um, public transport, environment, education, and so forth and so on. The whole, the whole garment of social development issues, when we when when we we have had enough you know we believe we've had uh, enough discourse or sufficient discourse to be able to sit down and make intelligent decisions, then we would make proposals to the country. But um, you know the process is started, and to be explained that that is that is true. We have to and and we look forward to seeing all the recommendations that have come forward. In other news, there has been no final solution in the so-called rapper controversy involving a Springer Memorial student. This despite a two-hour-long meeting at the Ministry of Education this morning between the girl's mother, her lawyer, and Education Minister Ronald Jones. Barbados Today is Anesta Henry is following the developments and has this story. After weeks of bringing her daughter's plight to the public's eye, Elysia Weeks finally got the opportunity to meet with Minister of Education Ronald Jones at his Constitution Road St. Michael office this morning. The mother arrived at the Ministry of Education just after 9 a.m., upbeat and ready for the 10 a.m. scheduled meeting. Child advocate Shelley Ross, who has been standing by her side throughout the ordeal, followed after, and so did her lawyer, Steve Strawn. They all made their way into Jones' office together. But two hours later, when they emerged, it was still unclear as to what will be the final solution to the matter. Will the 14-year-old student be returning to Springer Memorial School? Or will she be accepting the ministry's transfer to LRD Secondary remains unanswered. An outspoken weeks was tight-lipped following the meeting, but her lawyer, in a brief statement, told the media that the parties have agreed to work in the best interest of the student and were putting structures in place to ensure that the girl gets back into school as soon as possible. The lawyer also noted that the parties were currently in discussions to settle the matter, but there was no resolution. Anesta Henry reporting for Barbados Today. A 30-year-old local woman is among four people who were remanded to prison today after appearing in the whole town magistrate's court on charges related to a credit card scam. Melissa Latoya Cumberbatch of Carrington Village St. Michael was arrested and charged along with British nationals, 33-year-old Michael Akinbe, 30-year-old Joseph King, and 19-year-old Mukta Abushik. They ar their arrest followed investigations into reports of fraudulent credit card activities. Police say the four allegedly obtained items such as jewelry, perfume, and electronic equipment from luxury stores mainly on the West Coast after arriving here between February 3rd and 4th. A heavily pregnant Cumberbatch has been charged with nine counts of criminal deception and one count of attempted criminal deception. Akin Bay faces eight counts of criminal deception and one count of attempted criminal deception. King and Abu Sheikh have also been jointly charged with nine counts of criminal deception and one count of attempted criminal deception. Abu Sheikh faces an additional charge of possession of cannabis and going equipped. They will return to the District A Magistrates Court on Monday. In sports, two players have withdrawn from the West Indies squad for the upcoming World T20 tournament in India. The WICB today announced that Kyron Pollard pulled out earlier this week, citing a lack of progress in his recovery from an injury sustained in December. 
Sunil Narayan announced his withdrawal today, stating insufficient progress in rehabilitative work on his bowling action. Narayan is currently banned from bowling in international cricket. The WICB stated today that Carlos Brafwit will replace Pollard. A replacement for Narayan has not yet been named. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today. News you can trust. Well, it may be the month of love, but it is also the month of AgriFest. It is here, AgriFest 2016 at Queen's Park on February 26th through 28th. For launching the theme, Grow, Sell, Eat, Repeat. A humongous amount of attractions and activities for everybody. So don't dixie doodle your physiog. Oh, brother daddy will be there, along with Moishi, Dolly, Dootsie, and Dan. So come let me set with the very best of agriculture in the Caribbean. To news from the region, lawyers in Haiti say the agreement reached to avert a constitutional crisis after the then-president Michel Martelly's term expired last Sunday is flawed. Under the agreement, Parliament will elect an interim president for four months and confirm a consensus prime minister. The second round of presidential elections is scheduled for April 24, and the newly elected president is expected to be installed on May 14. But the Federation Bar of Haiti says the accord does not take into consideration any role of the judiciary, which under Haitian constitution is one of three custodians of national sovereignty. The lawyers are warning that any attempt to exclude one of the powers of state cannot promote sustainable solution of stability and serenity. On the international scene, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad says he plans to retake the country from rebel forces. In a rare interview, Assad told AFP News Agency that defeating the groups could take some time due to the involvement of regional powers. Yesterday, world powers agreed to push for a ceasefire within a week, and the UN says it hopes to start delivering aid to some besieged area in Syria within the next 24 hours. Assad said he supports peace talks, but said negotiations do not mean an end to fighting terrorism. We have fully believed in negotiations and in political action since the beginning of the crisis. However, if we negotiate, it does not mean that we will stop fighting terrorism. Two tracks are inevitable in Syria. First, through negotiation, and second, through fighting terrorism. And the two tracks are separate from each other. And finally, a Spanish civil servant who did not report to work for at least six years has been caught after becoming eligible for a long service award. 69-year-old Joaquin Garcia was fined $30,000 after the award brought his long absence to light. Garcia's job was, supervised, was to supervise the construction of a wastewater treatment plant. He has since retired. He denies the allegation and his lawyer says he has gone into hiding after suffering a media lynching. And that's news and sports. There's more on our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 101 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM, where you can get all the latest news and sports. I'm Fernella Wedderburn to have a safe and wonderful weekend. <laughs>